So you guys really seem to like these themed weekly fragrance rotation videos. That's pretty cool. That gives me something new and fun to experiment with. So seeing as I got a positive response from that last video and really from the video that I did before that, I figured I would go ahead and do another week of themed fragrances. This is basically where I stick to a theme throughout the week. Last time it was I only wore beast mode fragrances for a week. And this time of the past week, I've been wearing nothing but blue fragrances. Of course, you guys know blue fragrances, you know what they smell like and you know how to pinpoint if it's a blue fragrance or not. So I shouldn't have to explain that to you. And really this video wasn't too hard for me to do, right? Obviously being as we are getting into some warmer weather, I like my blue fragrances and I like to wear them, but I did try to challenge myself a little bit and you know, pick some ones that I maybe wouldn't normally wear. Because to be honest with you, I could have picked just one or two fragrances to wear throughout the whole week, a couple of my favorite blue fragrances and I would have been set. But instead, I challenged myself to pick out fragrances that I don't normally wear that are in the blue fragrance category to some extent. And I have a wide range of price points here, everything from really cheap fragrances to really expensive fragrances. So it'd be kind of cool for me to reflect back the past week and see all what I chose. And you know, I tried to challenge myself with wearing stuff that I usually don't wear to some extent. So let's go and start the video off with the first fragrance of the week. This is one that I just dropped a review on and that is Frank Olivier Bamboo. So if you haven't seen my review yet, to give you a brief rundown, this basically smells like Dior Sauvage slash Prada Carbon. It's just kind of that Sauvage DNA, but sweetened up, hence the Prada Carbon comparison. Uh, you can also kind of compare it a bit to um, Sauvage EDP. Regardless of which way you swing it, there's no denying this is a blue fragrance and you know, right out the gate, you can tell that. You get hit with that ambroxan, peppery, semi-sweet type of smell right out of the gate. And for the most part, it stays pretty linear, just like Sauvage and Carbon. They don't uh, change a whole lot as they dry down. They stay pretty much the same, may drift off a little bit, but really not a whole lot, especially not Sauvage. I mean, Sauvage EDT especially, what you get in the opening is for the most part exactly what you're gonna get in the dry down. And that's pretty much the same story here with this one. Now, the reason why this one caught my eye was because this is super, super cheap. You can get this stuff for like 20 to $25 online if you get it from FragranceNet and use the 35% code. I will link it down below. You can get this stuff for like 20-ish dollars, which is very, very cheap when you're comparing it to Sauvage going 80, 90, 100 dollars. So really, if you want a Sauvage type of fragrance here without breaking the bank, you know, you don't even want to pay product carbon around 50 dollars, go for this one. Not a bad alternative to Sauvage for about 20 bucks. Um, next, we have a fragrance that shouldn't surprise you, and this is definitely not one that I had to challenge myself on. Bulgari Aqua Atlantique. In fact, this is one of the ones that when I was talking about in the beginning of the video, I could have only chosen a couple blue fragrances to be set. This was one of them that I had in mind. But again, just because I put this in the week doesn't mean I didn't challenge myself on other days. Trust me, coming up, I got a few other ones in here that I don't normally wear that often. This is not one of those. I wear this stuff all the time. I mean, you look at the dent in this bottle. It's running low. Luckily, I do have, what is it, two backup bottles of this stuff, I believe, uh, two full backup 100 mils, so I'm pretty much set to go. Um, but I have put the Hertz to this bottle. I love wearing it in the summertime. You guys know that. It smells great. It's probably my favorite of the blue fragrances. It's the strongest performing one. Salty, a bit sweet, citrusy, marine. I mean, it, it's everything that you could want in a summer fragrance. Beast Mode performance as well. You guys know I had to sneak that in there. Bulgari Aqua Atlantique all comes in at about $45 to $50. You can't beat this stuff. Um, next here we have Parfums de Marly Sedley. I've been interested in this one for a while, ever since it first came out. And of course, just recently I've been getting into actually picking up these Parfums de Marly. And this stuff undoubtedly smells great. You have some Ambroxan, you have some mint. You have, I believe there's some lavender in here as well. So it's kind of a bit of an aromatic type of scent and it smells incredible. Nice, vibrant, uplifting opening. Of course, the Ambroxan note is gonna be there. It is gonna be prominent. And for me, that kind of puts this one somewhat in the blue fragrance category, 
but not really as much as some of the other blue fragrances out there, if that makes sense. You know, I don't want you to think that just because something has like ambroxan in it, it's automatically a blue fragrance because I don't think that's the case. I don't really believe it to be so, but this does have somewhat of a blue fragrance smell and it also just so happens to have ambroxan, which is kind of aiding in that. So therefore, I kind of put it to some extent in the blue fragrance category and it smells great really nice stuff not going to be the best performer on me i'm still wearing it still testing it obviously um, before i get out a review on it um, but really performance aside it does smell really nice now when you do spray this one on you know you do kind of get the feeling that maybe you've smelled something like it before like you just think oh, that smells familiar but i can't quite put my finger on it that sort of thing um, but that's not really a big deal because it does differentiate itself um, more so than not. So not a bad scent overall. Parfums de Marly Sedley going to be more expensive. This is one of those higher, you know, higher priced fragrances that I was talking about. So not going to be fit for everyone's price range. But if you like Parfums de Marly, you know, they do, they seem to do these fresher fragrances pretty well from what I've experienced so far. So let's go ahead and go back to another fragrance that I really do not wear really at all. In fact, ever since I last did a review on it, I haven't touched it or worn it since then. That's Polo Deep Blue Parfum, the new release. Like I already mentioned, I have done a review on this one. So if you want to hear some details on it, go check that video out. Um, and if you did watch the video, you'll know that I didn't really give this a raving review. I'm not crazy about it. It does smell good, don't get me wrong, but you know, I've never been the biggest fan of Polo Blue, just the original, and you do get that DNA in here. Um, they do have some Ambrox and some blue fragrance categorized stuff in here to make it fit into that. So because of that, I do like this a bit better than I like the original Polo Blue, but it's still not a love for me. That being said, that's not to say that this fragrance smells bad. It absolutely does not. It smells good, it smells pleasant, it's just not something that I fall in love with, and thus, it's not something that I choose to wear until this past week. You know, not gonna lie, I did enjoy it on the day that I wore it, but again, there's just not really anything about it that draws me to it, and that makes me go, hmm, you know, I'm trying to think of my scent of the day. I'm gonna go Polo Deep Blue Parfum. You know, for me, that just doesn't really click in my head, so it just kind of sits there on the shelf. Moving on to day number five, I went with Armani Code Colonia. I actually really like this scent. You guys know that. You know that I have featured it in quite a few videos. Like I mentioned, when you want an Armani Code DNA type of scent in the summertime, this is going to be your go-to. It's fresh and bright from the citrus and the ambroxan, or in this uh, fragrance, it's amber wood, but you also do get a creaminess from the tonka bean, and that mixture is just heavenly. This stuff smells incredible and it's going to be for the most part one of the more affordable Armani Code fragrances from the line. Um, typically Profumo, Absolute are usually going to be a bit higher in price but you can snag these oftentimes for a bit cheaper and it is worth every penny in my opinion. If you want a fresher take on this DNA for summertime when you're craving this stuff, seriously don't sleep on this one guys. Give it a shot. It smells incredible. Day number six, we have another fragrance that I have not worn or touched since I did a review on it. I mean, this is the case a lot of times with me. I'll pick stuff up just to review them and then, you know, I just, I just don't really wear them anymore. It's just the life of being a a fragrance reviewer, I guess, you know, I just have a lot of stuff that I buy to review and that's really about all I do with it um, until I did this video. So maybe I should do this video more so I can rotate through some stuff that I just don't wear. Not a bad idea. Day number six, Nautica Midnight Voyage. Again, you, got, you guys know the drill. If you want my full thoughts on it, check that review out. You can't even really see the label of this, can you, or the name? Uh, right there, Nautica Midnight Voyage. What does it smell like? It smells kind of like Prada Carbon Dior Sauvage, that sort of thing. Um, I picked this one up at retail. That's why I got a 50 ml. At the time, they didn't have the 100s out. I believe I paid, what was it, $35 for a 50 ml at retail, something along those lines. So, you know, not really cheap. I mean, when you do the price, the math on the price per mil, it's not really cheap, but it will be cheap when it does hit discounters at some point, uh, probably coming up here soon. Now, regardless of that, 
Again, another one that I didn't give a raving review just because it's another one that doesn't compel me to wear. It doesn't blow my mind like some others. And it's just one that I don't really necessarily feel a need for. But again, I've never once said that this fragrance smells bad because it doesn't. It smells good, it smells pleasant, and it's another one that I, you know, just don't reach for, but I reached for this past week, but I picked it out because it's a blue fragrance that just doesn't get all that much attention from me. And last up, we have the most expensive fragrance in this list, and this one by no means is going to be a stranger to this channel. One of my favorite fragrances from the house, it's a fragrance that really got me into the house. Um, you know, regardless of what this gets grouped into, being basic, being generic, you know, being boring, whatever, this is a fragrance that when I got a sample of it, I smelled this from a sample first, you know, I tried it and it was instant love at first sniff for me. Like this stuff has always resonated with me. I have incredible scent memories linked to it and tied to it. It's just one of those fragrances that just works on my skin like a charm. This one, of course, Rosa Parfums Elysium. It does get some criticism and get some negative feedback from time to time, but it's one of those scents that just works for me like no other. I love this stuff. And again, this is another one where, you know, it's 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 a blue fragrance in terms of its bottle and stuff like that, but it's not an Ambroxan blue fragrance. You know, some people will kind of compare it to Blue de Chanel. Don't really get a whole much of that comparison. Uh, but it is, for the line of Roja, a blue fragrance. So it may be kind of a stretch, kind of a cheat putting it in this video because it's not an Ambroxan fragrance, but I was craving it and I wanted to reach for it. And the bottle is blue. Sorry guys, I had to do it. I love this stuff. We're getting into the weather where I can really wear it to its fullest potential and well, that's what I wanted to end my week on. Roja Elysium. It's an entry level fragrance into the house. It kind of gives you a preview of the depth that these Roja fragrances have. I mean, out of all the fragrances that I own, these Rojas probably just have the most depth and complexity. Scandal, Parfum version, not the Parfum Cologne has depth too, but just the original Scandal. That one has so many layers. The Vetiver Parfum. That has so many layers. Even the Parfum Colognes, they have a lot of depth as well. You guys know I'm a big fan of that one. I actually prefer it to Parfum Cologne because of its depth. It's just obviously way more expensive. You get what I'm saying here? These fragrances have depth and quality like no other. And if you want to kind of dip your toes into the house and you want to start out with something that's very easy to wear and very mass appealing, check out Elysium. And that's what I ended my week on. So guys, that was going to do for me. That was my weekly fragrance rotation where I only wore blue fragrances for a week. Again, kind of tried to challenge myself here, reaching for things that I don't normally go for. It was pretty fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you like seeing these videos, make sure you show it by leaving a like on this video. And all these fragrances will be linked down below. If you want to pick any of them up, be sure to check out those links. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow night with another one. Take care.